Uh, welcome back. It's the caveman again, and um, today we're going to take and talk about uh, border fences that you can make up that are that are pretty decent. Um, I, I'm doing all this by myself. I need an assistant, so volunteers step right up. Um, let's see here. Let me get this track turned back on, and it's not so much to take and show you the track that I have or any of that kind of thing. It's basically to um, oh, I'm making a mess here. It's basically to explain sometimes why we all want these um, these fences up. Now, you know, this is a 124 scale, and in fact, in this case, um, I'm running the 124 transformer, okay? But here's the thing, you know, not just us, but the kids. So just keep a close eye there on the fence area, and this is, can happen, and if it flew off, the cars would probably get destroyed. Okay? Now... I'm going to do that again. It's not like I enjoy doing that. Well, I do, I guess, a little bit, right? But um, let's see if this is the right lane. I don't know if it is or not. Yeah. All right, and I'll do it one more time. Um, and basically, you can see the, the rail. That's approximately maybe six and a half inches or so tall. But the kids that come around it, it doesn't matter what scale they're running on your track. If the cars come too fast... You know, they wreck, they want to take and fly off the track. That track absolutely, or that car absolutely would have went off the track. And in my case, it may have hit the cement floor. It may have even went into the next room. But it could have either scratched the car up really, really bad or maybe even busted pieces off of it. So in this case, it still hits. It still takes and can cause some damage. But what you don't take and have is cars that actually get busted. And that can take and happen. Now, the unique thing is, is I'm using... Uh, these this is a career track and it can work on other tracks. I think it will work on Nick Ninko can take and use this same here connection But this is for like the, the flat bands of the the red and the white stripes that go along right and I'm using the solid uh, If you want to call it the rubber kind of a plastic rubber guardrail that's on the inside there And that's what I had up there before I put this up um, but this here is inexpensive fencing and in some cases you may take and have to take and tie it you know, or even if you wanted to take and get real fancy to where it was pulled up against it, you could take and take a little bit of hot glue or something like that. And I say hot glue because it does work pretty good, but you can also remove it. If you use an epoxy, yeah, it's going to be stuck there for a while. So that's up to you. But what you'll take and see here is there's a, there's a screw, right? And it goes through this here, and this is just plastic hardware cloth that you purchased from Lowell's. Usually it comes about 36 inches, about three foot tall or so. I'm not sure if it's four foot tall, but three, I, I know it is. And sometimes it's, you know, 20, I think it, maybe it's only 15 feet at the highest, but a lot of times it's only four and five feet. But they sell it at Lowell's, and you can see that's my little finger. Uh, it won't go into the hole, but um, it, it makes a good size as far as it goes. It's strong enough to take and stop the cars. And the nice thing is, is you measure how tall you want your fencing, and you can just cut it with regular scissors. Well, decent scissors have to be, but you can just cut it with regular scissors. The nice thing is you can just follow that square all the way down. You'll get a clean cut, and it'll be level all the way around the track, uh, all the way around your your rail. And then you want to take and measure how much you need. So when you take and cut it, everything's fine. Now these flags that I sell um, are great flags and things like that, and they clip onto you know the bottom of the track. But I found that they actually clip on to these two. Um, so that makes it nice as far as it goes, and I need two hands to put it back on there. But as you can see, the flags can still go up there, and so it, it makes a nice addition. Now, it can be painted gray, um, silver. You could paint it um, the chrome color paint. Suggestion first, <coughs> cut all the ones that you want. If you want these here to be gray, etc., you have to know that up underneath your track where you're going to set it, you don't have a, a little block of plastic that's going to take and get in the way. So, you know calculate maybe even build it completely right and take it back off nice and slow and you know lay it out on a piece of cardboard out in the, the driveway or you know on a table that you might have and you know spray away in my case black was fine and uh, you could even maybe just paint the, the top rail of this here in a sense black or silver or a different color you want you could paint it blue you could paint it pink um, up to the person but it does a great job all right now how to take and do it is is really simple actually and I just kind of fell across that but I was going to take and make solid borders and the bottom line is is it's like well I could do this and that but I couldn't see the car so I 
happened to see this stuff and I was like, wait, I can take and do that. Piece of cake. Anyway, um, let's see here if I'm showing it about right. Anyway, I've got these, uh, I'd screw in a nut, all right? Um, doesn't have to be real long or anything. This is about, give or take, uh, maybe, I don't know. I won't say a half inch, but it's it's around a half inch, okay? Um, it just has to be thick enough to take and go through the material. Now, this is a, a very short piece, okay? Very flexible, right? And it's all boogered up looking as far as it goes. How is it going to lay on your track? But when you get done and you pull it into place, it'll all take and straighten out for you. If for some reason you get a spot that's just driving you crazy, take a hair dryer and heat this. Don't burn it. Don't get it super hot. But just heat it a little bit and kind of move it, and it'll take and bend itself flat for you. Um, now... You can do the tops and bottoms of the roll you cut, and you will get this, right? But if you do in the center, you're going to end up with this on the top and the bottom, all right? Now, that it'll still make a fence, but it won't look as nice. It won't have this here border up on top that allows you to put flags on. Uh, you could even take and glue um, uh, sponsors' names and things like that on there. And, you know, there's things that I'm going to do to mine. They, they've just been up really a couple weeks. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give you guys an idea. And a lot of people... You know what? You got these. Even if you have to buy them, you know what to use them for and how to take and use them. Now, they definitely have to have a hole because they don't come with a hole. And if I remember, it is... Where'd it go? Yeah, 964 is the size of the screw, but or the drill, but it just depends on the screw you're putting in there. Now, you don't want to hold this because if you hold it, well, some people will... <laughs> You can take and drill it about right there, all right, and that's about where I've been. I drilled the other ones that I had. You don't want it too high, and you don't want it way down low. You want it at the top, and there's reasons to that. Anyway, you take and start to drill. You put it on there. Let's see here. Am I even showing it? Uh, there we go. Again, just trying to be careful. It is just plastic, so it's not like it's going to take a long time to go through it. And if your drill bit sharp, you can kind of do it that way. If you've got a piece of uh, wood below it you can take and you know put it right into the wood and you never hurt your your surface as far as what you're working with um, and basically it, it's as simple as this now you'll notice that right in here there's a couple little places where you know the other guardrail that normally goes in there would slide into place this here is a little thicker than that so you won't be able to do that but what you want to do is is try to pull it down to that level um, now it doesn't have to be on the outside. I guess the nuts could be on the inside, but the smoother you make the, the inside, the better. And what I didn't take and grab was a washer because you'll need a washer on this side, as you can see, right? So that this here screw, all right, will not go all the way through. So I thought I was prepared. I am missing a washer, so I'm going to grab one real quick. Um, Let's see here. We just need a washer that is going to take and have this here screw to where it doesn't slide through. Okay. And I grabbed the... I think I grabbed the right ones. No, no, no. That'll do. All right. Okay, so once again, let's see if I got it in the right place. You take and get this screw and you get it started in there. You can start at the very end. I guess that makes sense, of course, to take and do that and get the screw to go through, right? And take the nut, get it started on there. You know, if your fingers are kind of thick and stuff, it's a pain in the butt sometimes, but, um, you know, just to each their own. And some of the screws you can have longer, but you don't want too many sharp edges sticking out there. Um, and basically, you know, get it started by hand. Come to this side and uh, get you a screwdriver and you know tighten it up as far as it goes and that's it all right now like i said before this here this stuff trims real nice you can take and pretty much do anything you want you can take and trim your edges to where you know see how easy that cuts and these are just regular scissors or if this is the end right because you know at the end of the curve that's not where cars necessarily fall but you don't want to take and leave them completely open so what you want might want to take and do you could maybe you know, it just depends on the person, right? Cut them in an angle like this, you know, for your end. Uh, on mine, I'm trying to take and come up with something that's going to take and be a post in a sense on each end, um, just to take and have an indicator that that's the end of the 
the fence line. Anyway, you take and put these different places as you go along. And like I say, one thing that's nice is you're not going to make a mistake with the holes because you have all these holes to work with. So if you get up there to your track and you're going to put it on and you put these on the same way as you would otherwise as far as with the other track stuff on there, uh, with the other band on there that Carrera sells, you're going to take and find that it just locks into place and it holds it there very well. So anyway, that's, that's how you can make an inexpensive fence to take and protect your cars and it can be any height that you want pretty much anyway you don't want it too too high uh, the six inches that I've got mine has taken care of 132nd cars and 124th cars slamming into it high speed and uh, didn't affect it but the car stayed on the track uh, that was what I was last that's what I was looking for so all right that's it on that there as far as the fence goes um, okay kind of bouncing a little bit um, a while back, I was always wanting to take and, you know, buy numbers for my cars and so on and so on, and I couldn't take and find any stick-ons that were reasonable and decent, uh, you know, numbers and things. This here I got at Hobby Lobby, okay? It may not be uh, the color you want, I mean the size you want as far as your numbers, but it comes with a bunch of numbers inside, right? And it's rubber stamp, okay? Um, they do sell the permanent ink. Uh, different colors. You can have it in white. You can have it in black. White and black is two colors that I would suggest. But you know, it just depends on what you want to take and pay, how much you want to pay out, and how fancy you want to get with your cars. So all I'm going to take and do is open this thing up real quick, and uh, just give you an example of. Now you can use these numbers for many things. Today we're just going to use them for a car. And let's see here. You might take and practice. Let's see if I can do this without getting ink all over me. This would be the third time I've used it, but let's see here. I need some room. Yeah. Okay. So when you're holding it, the number, in this case 69, right? You take and dab it, and just if you want to check it, right? See if you're holding your numbers the right way. In other words, does it look the way you want it to? And remember how it looks, because if you put it on that way, that's what you're going to see when you pull it away. In other words. If you see it that way and you stamp it and when you pull it off that's what you should see that's how these these stencils are made now you know I'm just going to take and do a couple markings on this but they do take and work very well um, I've, I've made mistakes on some of them and just painted over them and that one there see I got the edge right there on the on this here so it didn't work very well so I'm gonna try the other side and you know we learn as we go it up. Whoops. See, I'm sliding here. Okay, if I wouldn't have slid, the number would have been nice on there. And in this case, I could take and that's permanent ink, so it will dry and it'll stay on there really good um, as far as that goes. Now, some race cars, they, they want them on the front of the cars, um, actually in different sizes and stuff. Let's see if I can do this without holding it up. But, you know, if you wanted the number there, You know, you wanted a number on the top without making a mistake. Um, and I'm kind of doing this a little quicker than, you know, maybe what we should as far as it goes. But it just shows you what you can and can't do with this. After you get done using that, they probably make a cleaner for it. But the, the easiest thing to take and say is just take yourself a paper towel and blot it a couple times before you put it all back into your package. Um, see here all right that there uh, was basically it the only other thing I wanted to take and say is that same paint that I was explaining that was from Walmart um, I used to paint this car now it's not a fancy paint right but if your kids or you want to take and paint a car maybe give it a rust look that's exactly what I did with this here car um, the paint stays on there no big deal it doesn't rub off or nothing and you can use any of the colors and only buy them for 50 cents and one of those bottles would probably you know, probably paint 25 30 cars if you wanted to paint that many of them you know pop your windows out of place when you start and the uh, the headlight lenses as far as the basils and that way it'll you know look a little nicer when you get done as far as it goes just depends on the color and what you want to do with your car um, and that wraps this particular video up thanks for watching and uh, take care